Glazer is here tonight. I, I can't point him out to, to you or anyone else because uh, he put a lot of people in prison and they, they would like nothing better than to get back to him. It's just a great story. You have a man who's very noble, doing the right thing. It's his job to make a difference in the world. What really got me about this story was the plot. Sure, yeah, get the bad guys. But he's playing a bad guy during the day. What got me was he leaves that behind every day and goes home and he's Bob Mazur, dad, uh, husband, help kids with the, the homework and take the trash out and tell his wife, ah, it was a good day, you know, nothing happened. Even if something very close happened, he couldn't say anything. So I was curious about a man who, who lives that kind of duality. How are you? And just keeps them completely oh, separate. And if, how, that, how I make that real and authentic. Since the time I was 22 years old, the only thing I really wanted was to become a, a working actor, make my living as an actor. Anything beyond that is gravy, I still think that. So when I was 25 and I started okay. working exclusively as an actor, that was the happiest ever. That's still my proudest professional moment, is saying I am an actor and I don't have to ever do anything else to earn a living. And whatever, ha I would be happy with that. And if opportunities come, great. If they wane, okay. Uh, so I, I don't think the business owes me anything. Life doesn't owe me anything. I have no sense of entitlement. I'm just riding a wave. And as long as I'm like, I'm I can't believe I'm still on the surface. Board, uh, I'll, I'll work, work, work. Can you speak about collaborating with Brad and what you admire about him as a filmmaker? Oh my God, Brad is he's a genius, man. I mean, when you work with somebody who loves what they do and wants to do it the best, the, the writing, the acting, the directing, the cinematography, you know, you don't get directors who care that much. You get a few, Spike Lee, Brian De Palma, Baz Luhrmann, you get a few. And what most surprised you about this story? Just how greed can really mess even institutions up. I mean, it's the biggest bank bust in American history because all these American banks were money laundering and they knew they were doing illegal things, but the money was so huge, they didn't care. What was the hardest part about like, playing a real character? Well, you know, it was, I wanted to get some of his mannerisms, I, 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 but I didn't want to do an imitation. And, uh, but he, they were there on the set with us, so that really helped. So I would ask him constantly, would I, how would I do this scene? How would I do this interrogation? How would I convince these people that I'm not a cop? So they were there with me constantly, and I was always able to draw on them. Speak about watching Brian transform. Oh, that was great, man. I love that he changes from this California guy, and he becomes this Italian, you know, cop. It was great, man. It was great to see it. What was the most challenging scene to shoot in this? All of them. <laughs> I don't know. This movie was very tough. I, I, I wish I could isolate one scene. Each scene had different challenges. Uh, the DNA of the compressed schedule, the DNA of the fiscal challenges. Uh, there was one scene where the actors uh, with Juan Seeley, John Leguizamo, Ruben, uh, they had to fight and there's some gun shooting and the technicality and emotion and gravity and physicality was really hard on all of them. And, I think that this scene is really titillating with what was really going on on set, which was a lot of drama. And I, I think that we, we try to grasp, grasp that and make it work. So, but it was tough. Speak about watching Brian transform for this and collaborating with him. Brian just does his preparation. We spent a lot of time in Tampa. We spent a lot of time with Bob Mazur, Ev Mazur. And um, as a result of that, we uh, put our time in, so we prepared. It's like getting ready for the big game. you got to put the practice time in. And Brian's that guy. He does the due diligence. So uh, he came prepared, I came prepared, and we did our jobs. What most surprised you about this story? But I'm sure you guys have The government corruption and uh, how much they were... Um, par and parcel and involved in everything. <laughs> Thank you, congratulations. Thank you so much. I play a guy called Javier Ospina. Um, oh, and uh, his, he's a real guy. His grandfather was the president of Colombia at one time. And um, so he had access to a lot of high levels of government. And um, so he ran in those circles. He's an Ivy League ed educated guy. Um, he's a very, very smart guy, obviously, or he wouldn't, you can't work for somebody like Pablo Escobar if, if, if you're not smart. Uh, but he was a total hedonist. He's a, he's a, he devoured men, women, whatever. He was 
drugs, alcohol, you know, he was just one of those guys, one of those people, you know, he's a voracious appetite for any for life. Tell me a little bit about the role you play in this. I play the informant, and the informant is a really nice, cool narco-traffic guy who work, work with the CAA, and um, nothing is a, a bad guy can like to and play with naughty things in the film, yeah. Speak about working with Brian. Oh, I just feel so lucky. He's just so kind and in the scene and nice person and and uh, playful. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of delicious to work with Brian Cranston. So tell me a little bit about your vision for the music. So Brad Furman and I, uh, who uh, we worked with many times, he's a dear friend and a trusted collaborator. We wanted to create this score that had uh, a feeling of the 80s, uh, and I did that by using a lot of synths, synthesizers, but we didn't want it to feel strictly like that. We wanted to still bring something new to the table and create something that was dramatic, so I combined a lot of the 80s sounds and textures with my own sense of lyricism and strings and ambient sounds, so that's kind of how I came up with the palette of sounds for that would take us on this musical journey. 